Hey guys, it's the Andy Stein here, doing an anime review for the first time in for fucking ever. <laughs> Today I'm going to be looking at uh, Kaon. Have you ever wondered what strange shapes Guitar Hero and Rock Band base their controllers around? Do you have an interest in making music or just watching other people make music? How about a love for all things Moe? Well, then I certainly have an anime for you. Kaon is about four, later on five, Japanese high school girls who join their school's light music club, which in this case, uh, light music basically means like contemporary or pop music, to try and save it from being abolished. However, Yui, the lead guitarist, has no experience playing musical instruments or reading sheet music in the beginning, but is blessed with perfect pitch. Eventually, she becomes a competent guitar player and background singer. The rest of the club helps her to buy a Gibson Les Paul, and they perform at the school festival twice. Despite the fact that they drink tea and eat sweets most of the time, and practice very little when together. The name of their school is Sakura Gakua. I think I'm pronouncing that right. And uh, the light music club basically consists of Salko Salachan, who is the on-the-surface polite advisor who used to be in the light music club back when she was in high school, as part of a heavy metal band called Death Devil. When with the light music club, she's more of her real self, which is rebellious, lazy, and she has a, a thing for dressing up the girls in different cosplay outfits, like maids and cat girl stuff and a bunch of weird stuff. And uh, there's Yui, the clumsy but obliviously talented lead guitar player, as well as backing singer. She was set to be the lead singer, but due to some circumstances, I won't really spoil it for you, she was relegated to background status. She had no previous musical experience before joining the club, except for playing castanets in elementary school. You know, little things go... But she managed to become suitable to the band's style of music shortly after joining. Then there's uh, Ritsu Richan, the energetic drummer who's also the club's official leader, although it's it's a bit different when uh, the club is uh, in session. <laughs> she was the one who wanted to join the light music club in the first place and basically managed to convince everyone else to join, sometimes using underhanded tactics to do so, and by sometimes I mean most of the time. <laughs> and then there's uh, everybody's favorite bassist, Mio! She's the reluctantly popular bassist, lead vocalist, and main songwriter, as well as the only lefty of the group. She's practically Paul McCartney with boobs. That's right, I said it. She is Paul McCartney with boobs. She is usually shy and responsible, but tends to freak out when it comes to scary stuff. This is Moe Gold right here, folks. Then there's Smoogie, also known as Moogie-chan, the wealthy and gentle keyboardist who's been playing piano since she was four, and she has won several competitions. Her father is the president of a large but unknown company that seems to own the music store where Yui got her guitar and a maid cafe where all the club suites come from. And then later on in the series, they get a new member called uh, Azusa, who's later nicknamed Azunyan. She is the younger rhythm guitarist who joins the group a year after it was saved by the original four members. She's much more technically proficient than Yui, which is because her parents are in a jazz band, so of course you know, they push their little girl to play her best. Azusa takes practicing very seriously, but she learns to loosen up as she is with the club. Now, storyline-wise, being in the slice of life genre, which is one of my favorite genres, as well as having a severe case of the moe, <laughs> the story for Kaon can get downright muddled at times. It's not that it's random, a la Azumanga Daio, or Lucky Star. There is a storyline in each episode, but the focus likes to shift a lot. This does sound interesting in theory, but it doesn't quite pan out in practice. I'm by no means an anime snob. I absolutely detest least attitudes towards anything in life. When it comes to anime, I don't really care if I'm watching something that's critically acclaimed like Cowboy Bebop or severely panned like Green Green, as long as I enjoy what I'm watching. The amount of in-show fan service has also been modestly and smartly placed, despite the zillions and zillions of mostly suggestive fan art of Mio and Asasa creeping around the interwebs. I give it a 5 out of 10 for an at times jerky ride of a storyline with smart fan service placement. Now the animation and music. Although critics be damned, I thought the animation quality was mostly good. However, the instruments, especially Yui's poor uh, Les Paul named Gita, totally original, right? Seem to be on the wrong side of the budget cuts. Her guitar's appearance ranges from very well drawn, with even Gibson on the headstock, to a blobby mess, with seemingly no good middle ground. Since Kaon revolves around music, it's only natural that the music be nicely done. The club's signature tune, Fwa Fwa Time, which roughly translates to light and fluffy time, reminds me a lot of Party Hard by Enter WK as far as the chord structure goes. But it is, 
lighter and fluffier. <laughs> the song I liked the most from the soundtrack is a slow, bluesy number called Hold On Your Love. It's a very moving two minutes of music. I give the animation a 6 out of 10 for sometimes butchering guitar, <laughs> and the music an 8 out of 10 for a well put together soundtrack. Now the characters. The one thing that bugged the crap out of me when watching this series is that I sometimes visually confuse Yui and Ritsu. Yes, they have slightly different hair color, and yes, Ritsu's hair is pulled back while Yui's hangs down. However, it's their hair length and texture, as well as their closely matched hair color that really makes me up sometimes. Looks aside, although each girl has their own personally personality unique among the group, I feel that they don't evolve as much as characters as the show progresses. I'll give them the benefit of the doubt, since it's is only a 13-episode uh, series, which should see another 13 episodes considering the immense popularity of it. I'll give them a 7 out of 10, since they're unique among themselves, character-wise, but still have a long way to go to develop themselves. Now, the enjoyment, or the fun factor. Although the recession has put the old kibosh on producing as many anime series as before, of the recent anime that I've been watching, k is only seconded to Toradora. Would I watch it again? Sure. In fact, I'm rewatching this series this week to gain a better perspective on the characters after I know what's basically going to be going down in the series. As I said before, k should be getting a second season since it was especially well received by Moe Hungry fans looking to whet their appetites while waiting for season 2 of The Melancholy of Haruhi Suzumiya, which was finally released near the end of k first season. After three years of impatient waiting and broken promises, aka marketing strategies. But that's another story altogether. I give them an 8 out of 10 for a fun, light-hearted musical romp through Moeville. Now, the overall score. k really took a beating in its overall rating, mostly because of its oddly structured storylines, occasionally awful instrument illustration, and little to no character development. Despite these shortcomings, it was quite an enjoyable anime to watch. Its immense online popularity also makes it relatively easy to talk about amongst other otaku without having to explain what the series is about. I would suggest that the next season focus on drawing the instruments clearly and on a consistent basis, as well as giving the characters some backstory to help us, the audience, gain a better perspective on them. So overall, I give k a 6.8 out of 10. This is the Andy san signing out for now. You guys have an excellent day, and be sure to check out K-On! Later!